You're right guys, if you saw my video on Friday, you'll have seen me make this Overwatch Warlight. Now that was just a really quick fun video, but this one is going to be more in depth and a little bit longer. I've got voiceover explaining the whole process, so if you plan on making one, I hope you find this one a lot more helpful. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch recently and I thought that the logo was perfect for a Warlight, so I had to have a go at making one. I decided to make mine out of walnut because that's what I already had on hand. You could of course use any material you like. I think some MDF painted or even plywood with the exposed edges could look great. I had to glue up the pieces of walnut I had and I made a square that was just over 45cm by 45cm and 5cm thick. I printed off the Overwatch logo onto some self adhesive paper and then stuck it onto some plywood. This will be my template. I cut out the shape using my jigsaw and then refine the shape with a file and some elbow grease. It's a lot easier to refine the shape of a thin template like this instead of the full thickness walnut. When I was happy with the shape I traced around it onto my walnut board the shape has a diameter of 45cm, this time I cut the shape out on my bandsaw making sure to leave a bit over to remove later with the router. You could use the jigsaw again but the bandsaw is a lot faster. Once I had the rough shape cut out I attached the plywood with some small screws. The holes won't be seen on the back of the light when it's done. The template now offers a guide for my flush trim router bit. The router isn't quite large enough so I use my spindle sander to remove the rest and smooth out the edges. As always the tight corners need to be cleaned up by hand, I'll just use the file again. For the top of the logo I'll cut out an arch in some 6mm plywood, this will be the back of the light section. It needs to be flush with the back though so I cut a space in the back of the walnut for it. Allowing space for the gap in the logo, I glued on some small blocks of plywood. These will help locate the light and also hold it in place. I wanted to have the light section completely clear, so I tried cutting plexiglass on the bandsaw, but it just cracked, so I just used my handsaw in the end. To help with the light diffusion, I sanded one side of the clear plastic. I used some plastic super glue that came with a quick activator pen to stick the pieces together. It wasn't strong enough for the plastic to bend to, so I had to resort to some heat bending. Nothing fancy here, just my kitchen hob. I held the plastic over the heat until it became pliable. Then using the plywood as a form, I tried to shape the pieces. It was a lot easier to glue them together, but I wasn't happy with how it looked. Plan B was a plywood case and a clear top, so this is what I did. I cut the arch shape out of some double thick 18mm plywood that I just glued together. A dab of wood glue and a clamp closes the shape. I needed a frame for the front so I cut out some more 6mm plywood and that just got glued onto the front. Once it was dry I painted both parts with some matte black spray paint. The frame gives a flat edge inside that I can now super glue the plastic to. I add a thin bead of glue around the edge and stick the plastic in place. I think this looks a lot better. Now that's done I can give the walnut three coats of spray lacquer, sanding between each coat. For the electronics, that I know nothing about by the way, I use some LED fairy lights that came with a battery pack attached for three AA batteries. 
This wouldn't fit in the plywood enclosure, so to make it fit, I cut that off. To make controlling it easy, I got a remote switch, and I also got a 9 volt battery and a clip to power the light. I connected them together, and it worked, so that's as far as my knowledge goes. I've got some insulation that works great at diffusing light, so I cut some shapes that would fit into the plywood enclosure. I stuck the lights onto one of the shapes with some tape and checked how it looked. This is with one layer, two layers, three layers and finally four layers. In person the light definitely looks like one solid panel. It leaves just enough room to fit the battery and switch in. I add the back and screw into each side to hold it in place. The screws go into those plywood blocks I glued on earlier. The light panel gets secured with four screws into the back of the walnut now. To hang the light on the wall, my plan was to use some simple picture hangers, but they were nowhere near strong enough so I changed them for some more heavy duty ones. These need to be flush with the back so I used my rotary tool to remove the bulk of the material. and then cleaned it up with my chisels. Using a 10mm drill bit and chisels, I created a space for the screw head to fit and move freely. So this can now be hung on the wall, but I need to put screws in the wall first. Using a piece of cardboard, I marked where the holes in the brackets were and transferred the marks to the wall. The laser line really helps to keep it level. I taped an open envelope to the wall to catch the dust and using the hammer mould on my drill, I made a hole in the brick wall. Added a raw plug and then screwed in the screw. I did the same for the other screw and now the light can be hung in place. So that's it then guys, I really hope you find this video helpful. I had a lot of people reply to my last video mentioning what I'm best to do to fix the problem with the battery. As I said on Friday, the battery drains really quickly. With it switched off, it's completely dead in two days. And people let me know it is the problem with that remote switch. It's constantly draining power. So I'm gonna be adding just a little normal on off switch in that little gap there you shouldn't really see it so it'll just be a case of flicking the switch to turn it on and then i can still use the remote and when i'm done turn it off and it should cut off the power completely then so the battery should last longer i was also advised to use more of a higher milliamp battery i'm not too sure about all the technical stuff just yet i'm still learning everything like that but that's something i'm definitely going to be looking into so thank you very much for everybody's help i really appreciate it i hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down if you've got any comments any questions as always i answer all comments down below if you're not subscribed to my channel already please do so i do loads of different videos project videos quick tips reviews everything like that so i'm sure there'll be something that you enjoy i really appreciate it if you could share the video too perhaps you know somebody who plays overwatch the self they might like this project or just woodworking and projects in general i really appreciate it thank you all for watching again